There is a book about Eastern thought and Western thought and how they differ. It's called The Geography of Thought by Richard E. Nisbet. How Asians and Westerners think differently and why. So that's a bit of a provocative title, but book titles should be provocative. And actually the author is very specific when he talks about Western, which means mainly US American, North American, and also European, and Eastern or East Asian, which refers to China first and foremost, but also to Korea and Japan, which uh, inherited much of the Chinese culture. So I made a little diagram here. We have West and East. So Western thought is basically object-based and it is rooted in ancient Greece. The Greeks, they saw an atomized world where everything could be deconstructed and taken apart. And they also had the philosophical view that an object is static, it can't change. Because if it changes, then it's not the same object anymore. And this is contrasted to the, the ancient Chinese view, which stressed the whole. They saw the world as a seamless whole and everything was connected to everything else. So you couldn't just take out an object from a body, for example, and replace it like in a way the Greeks did with surgery because uh, surgery came only in the 18th century to China because everything is uh, connected to everything else. And the Chinese had the concept of resonance where it's like a string on a guitar that if you play it, it resonates to all the other instruments uh, in the near. And uh, the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, they were also very curious. And uh, the, the, the Chinese were not, according to the author. In China, harmony was stressed. Harmony, because... Um, okay, so he has some um, theory as to why these two systems evolved. And his theory is that uh, in China... China was made up of uh, fertile plains, which were very good for agriculture. And in agriculture, the village and the family is important. So um, you have to find your place in the hierarchy and work together on the fields uh, in agriculture. Whereas in Greece, Greece was a hub, a trading hub, where ships came in from many different regions. And that made the Greeks be exposed to different worldviews. So in fact, he says that um, objectivity was born in ancient Greece, but it was born out of subjectivity. Because since everyone had their own view and they debated it a lot, there was also a recognition that there must be some objective truth independently of our views. Yeah, so, so that's the introduction to the book. And the bulk of the book uh, is about psychological studies that uh, confirm these theories. And the most important studies show that we literally see different things in an image. So when a Westerner looks at an image, they remember the object in the foreground. But when Easterners look at an, um, an image, they remember the context and the relation between the objects in the image. The, the classical test for this is the, the rod in the frame. If you have a frame and, uh, you're gonna, and, and you have a rod which is almost vertical, then you have to pinpoint when the rod is exactly vertical, which is very easy for Americans because they focus only on the rod, but it's very hard for East Asians because they see the rod in relation to the frame, um, which we all do to a certain extent, but it is like a continuum and East Asians are instead better at positioning the rod uh, exactly like it was relative to the frame than what Americans are. And... Um, one of the most interesting chapters is about uh, what is called to attribute cause. There is something called FAE or fundamental attribution error, which especially Americans are very prone to, but all of us are uh, quite prone to it. It means that um, we think that the cause for something is in a person's 
personality rather than in uh, the situation. And it's also a continuum. So, for example, in uh, business studies, there have been a lot of studies made on business life, probably because it's easy to get funding. And uh, it shows that Americans, North Americans or US Americans, they are on the very Western Western edge of the scale. And of course, uh, that's contrasted to the, the, the Japanese and the Koreans and the Chinese who are on the very Eastern end on the scale. In business, that means that um, the Americans stress uh, egalitarian values and uh, merit and uh, that you must fire someone who doesn't do their job properly and so on. And the Japanese view is that you have to take in the context. If a, if a person has worked for the company for a long time, then you might keep him despite he doesn't produce the results that were expected. But interesting here is that uh, Protestant Northern Europe is um, closer to the American view than Southern Europe is. So uh, the Germans, the French and the Italians, uh, by Germans I think he means the Catholic Southern Germans, they are uh, in between. And I think this is because um, they have so many family companies and uh, they... Um, yeah, they have a tradition of that, simply. Anyway, there is a long chapter on logic versus dialecticism. And logic is a very Western idea. I mean, it was invented by Aristotle in ancient Greece. And um, that means that uh, Westerners have a very logical way of thinking, which is very good in science, but it it's maybe not as good to, to apply it to everyday life, for example, with this fundamental attribution error. The point with the... Okay, so, so in science, it's good to have a logical mindset where you can actually... Or, or an atomized mindset where you can actually try to pinpoint a certain cause to a certain thing. Because that way, if you are wrong which uh, Socrates was in many of his propositions, for example. If you are wrong, then you know that you're wrong, and then you can try another model. Versus if you, like in ancient China, if you say that everything is interconnected and everything can play a part in this, then you can't really evolve beyond that. So that's why Western science uh, prospered um, in certain ways. But uh, this is not as good when you apply it to everyday life because uh, you, you can't just say that your worldview, your, the model you had was wrong and then you try another model because we all keep these models in our heads the whole time without being aware of it. And um, yeah, anyway. Uh, so... What are the implications of all this? Well, the main implication, as the author stresses, is that it shows that studies that are made on people in US America, psychological studies, they have previously claimed that their findings are universal, that this is how people perceive the world, this is how people work. But those studies are not universal, because if you test them on other people, then you get other results. So that's a very important implication to become more humble. So the, the main reason why I read the book is that um, very often you just hear people say that, uh, well, you know, in Asia, people are not as much blah, blah, blah as they are in the Western world. Okay, but those are very sweeping statements often, and I tend to do them myself as well. But reading this book actually gave me some meat and... Uh, and uh, made me realize that, yeah, th there are different ways of perceiving the world due to the culture that we have lived in for thousands of years. And regarding that, the author speculates what will happen now. We can take the best of, the, of each system and, um, and apply it to our lives, something like that. Yeah, that's it. Um, I think you don't have to read the book, but uh, I thought it was interesting. <laughs>